Hello, everyone. Nice to see you. Nice to see these bright, intelligent, well-educated people in this room. And I hope you are also very healthy. If you have these habits like don't smoke, don't overeat, eat vegetables every day, do physical exercise, and drink alcohol in moderate, congratulations. You will live 14 years longer than other people. Are you among those people? If not, yes, good. But if not, you're probably one of many, many million people in the world who will try to fight with their bad habits. Try to imagine if it would be very easy stuff to change our bad habits. It would be much more easier to achieve our new goals. It's very difficult stuff to fight on the finals of a tennis, especially on the French Open, because in a clay court, it's the most physically demanding finals in the world. On 1999, two tennis players were fighting each other. Medvedev on the right, he was winning. He was uh, playing against Agassi. He was winning two sets straight, very easy, 6-1 to 6-2. In the middle of third game, he was very, very close to the winning. But he was almost about to make a break. To win that game, something happened with his mind. His play changed. He started to lose. He lost one game, another he lost set. And he gradually lost the final two sets and he lost the championship. What happened to him? Isn't the same happened with us when we try to change our habits? When we're almost there, for example, we try to quit uh, overeat or quit smoking. Okay, we lose some weight and we are happy. But actually after several months, we started to eat again or wait again. Would it be good if we find something, some sort of mental set of mind, which could help us to overdone this much more easily? What we face right now in the world, each year about 50% of population trying to lose their weight. About 70% of smokers, they're trying to quit their smoking. But what actually happens? About 97% of people, almost everyone, would regain their weight during three years. How many times it need to quit smoking in order to not smoke for one year? Try to guess. More than 30 times. Why it's so difficult to fight with our bad habits? Why we couldn't make it much more easy? Maybe something with our brain. Maybe something in our, with our subconscious world. Because some subconscious world, subconscious mind, it's uh, short-sighted. It's just related to our desire, to our emotions, to our habits. It doesn't understand our conscious world. For example, consciously we understand we should go out and run for a while. So it would burn our calories. It would make our heart to beat much more better. But our subconscious says as well, what is the profit of running in the circles outside? We understand that if you type on a computer to report, we submit, we would get a higher grades. But our subconscious mind says, uh, I don't understand why it's a profit of it just to type on these small buttons. So there's always fight between conscious and subconscious, how we could manage to connect it. So we made an experiment here in the PU. Uh, we tried to analyze brain activity during the task which was given to the students. It's a simple task. Try to memorize 10 digit number. But actually it sounds very easily, but it's a very demanding work for a working memory. Working memory is a place in our brain which is responsible for our decision. Every each second decision. So people usually memorize five to seven numbers. And during that time, their brain very, very hard working. That red color on the image it's how the oxygenized hemoglobin is rushing to the brain to give more energy, more power. But among all students, two couple of students, they managed to memorize all 10 numbers with very less, less mental work. I started 
talked to, to them. What happened to you? How you managed to do that? And actually, they used a trick. They used, they used a tactic which called Nemo technique. They transformed the digits into the words and could easily memorize them. So they use a tactic. Why don't we use the same tactic? Why don't we use the same skill? So we free more space in our brain so we could make much more clearer decisions. The same work has been done in other universities, University of Yoga. So they asked people to have a, uh, have a choice among fruit salad and among very tasty chocolate cake. But before that, they asked them to memorize seven numbers, one group, and two numbers to another group. Which one you would choose? That group who memorized seven numbers, they actually, 50% more, have chosen tasty chocolate cake. So it again proves that our theory is that when our working memory is busy, we are prone to choose unhealthy habits. So let's go back to the game and try to identify based on knowledge we, which we already have, what happened in the brain of those tennis players. Maybe Medvedev, when he was very close, very close to the winning, like everyone, which is very close to the goal, he started depicting himself in a winning situation. Probably he was thinking that he's holding that trophy in his hand. Maybe, maybe he was thinking that he already received that money, prize money, in uh, this year it was about two million euro prize, very big money, maybe he was thinking that his friend was congratulating him. Yes, it's good. Isn't it like positive psychology teaches us, please think about success, keep in mind your success. But maybe the problem is that he was thinking about it too much, that he forget about concentrating on the game. But what happened to Agassi? When he was one step just of, from losing, what he was doing, he didn't think maybe about holding the trophy. He was constrained on the plane. And maybe that person who played in his image was thinking about holding a trophy. Do you feel the difference? So the theory is when we think only about success, actually we become demotivated. Isn't it sound strange? Yes, because our subconscious Try realize, realize actually that we already get the success. But if we concentrate on a procedure, on the process of the winning, actually we are mu much more motivated. Maybe this is just my imagination, but it's not. It was proved by several research work. For example, in this one, which has been done in Los Angeles University of California, they also divided, group, uh, divided students into the groups, three groups. For one group, they asked to think only about getting a, a grade. For other group, they asked to think about the process of getting the A grade. They asked them about think about the problems, the obstacles which they could meet. They asked uh, to think about how they turn out invitations. So all the process and also thinking about the A grade. Third group, third group was a control group. So what happened? First group has the same grade as a control group. But the second group, they actually had an eight point higher degree, almost one letter higher. This is how an image works. So we come here to mental contrasting. What is mental contrasting? It was designed by uh, Gabriela Ottingen. It's when you put your final goal, your final outcome, contrast to the obstacles which you might meet during getting to your goal. So this is mental contrasting. So you need to keep four steps. First, you should think about the goal. You should imagine your goal which you would like to achieve. Second, you need to think about the, your feeling after you achieve that goal. You feel satisfied, you feel happy. Third one, you need to think about obstacles which you meet during achievement, during achieving your goals. And the fourth one, you need to think about the plan. This fourth step is a mental contrasting. Well, we have now the process how to get good habits, but what about how to fight with the bad habits? For example, 
if you would like to, to eat cakes, how you would like, how you would possibly reduce uh, your eager to eat more. So here is one trick. The garlic effect. Maybe you heard about this one. The garlic effect, it's when you finish something unfinished, your mind would like to somehow accomplish that one. For example, it's uh, in a, when Mozart, he was ill, he was lying on the bed, his friend came to him, and uh, Mozart couldn't get up and talk to him, so his friend played some uh, concert on the piano, but left it unfinished, and he's left. And he, the Mozart, after that, he wouldn't bear stand, that, stand up that the piano concert was not finished. He stand up and finish that play. So the same happened around us. So next time, when you would try to quit something, to reduce something, instead of thinking how to stop it, maybe try to think how to actually do it in your mind. Remember? Mental contrasting. So when we are, we are thinking about stop eating cakes, we are thinking about the cake. If we are thinking about quitting smoke, we are thinking about cigarettes, right? Actually, we put trigger the zygonic effect. We would like to accomplish that action. But oh, if we do opposite, if we would do that actually in our mind, we eat that cake. Yes, you hear me right. Actually, in your mind, try to eat and finish that cake in your mind. What happens after? In your mind, try to smoke if you're a smoker. Smoke that cigarette and finish that cigarette. What happened after that one? Well, it sounds crazy. But research says that it actually helps. For example, in the two groups, they ask to eat in their mind M&M and &M chocolate. One group ate 30 and M&M and &M chocolate in their minds, one by one. Another group ate only three pieces of chocolate. And after that, they were given a lot of real chocolates. So please imagine how many of them they eaten, these two groups. Actually, that group who eaten only three, in, in their mind only three pieces of chocolate, they ate much more than that group who eaten in their mind 30 pieces of chocolate. So the same would be applied to any bad habits which you have. Actually, I tried this myself. When I was, I, some trigger happened in my mind, I would like to drink more coffee. I would like to drink more coffee, it's very uh, energy boosting. And I said, well, okay, let's try to do a new tactic. And in my, in my mind, I drink that coffee, I felt satisfied, and just after several seconds, I didn't want to drink any coffee. So maybe this new tactic, in future, if you use it, would help you. It's a trick would help you much more easily to quit your bad habits. How mental contrasting works? It actually connects your subconscious mind with a conscious mind. Our subconscious mind understands only images. So if you make up a very good images of your future, of your success, and depict all the road from the current situation to the future with all obstacles. Your subconscious mind would understand you and would help you in getting your future plans. Please look at this image. Do you think that Agassi was completely aware, confident that he could win his trophy? By his face expression, we realize no, actually he didn't believe in that until he actually won the final point. So maybe it's all, it's related to all of us. We need to concentrate not only to the final successful point, we need to think also about the process and maybe after that you would be much more successful. You would fight, fight with your negative habits and would achieve more healthy goals in your life. Thank you very much.